Arya rehearses her swordplay while genuine swordplay pours out of the royal chamber after Cersei and Joffrey attempted to guarantee the lofty position. The battling heads into the yard, where Cersei's men kill anybody who hinders them. Sansa goes searching for her sister, however her nursemaid hears the battling and sends Sansa to her room with severe guidely. Ness not to open the entryways for anybody. The nursemaid defies four furnished men alone. Arya loses at her rehearsing when her instructor Sirio Forrell says one course and she tunes in and follows as. Opposed to responding to what he's really doing. He addresses her on following what she sees and responding. Lannister men come for Arya, however Forrell goes up against them. Furnished with just a wooden sword he takes on four men. She watches, flabbergasted as he incapacitates everything the men until the skipper is left. Arya urges him to leave with her, yet he won't withdraw. The commander bat, ortles him and breaks the foral's wooden sword. He sends Arya away, asking what they tell the divine force of death. Not today, she parrots. She leaves. She runs and hears shouts as they battle. Sansa runs into the dog in the passage. She takes steps to tell the sovereign. Who do you think sent me? He insults. Arya runs into the patio and sees the case that holds her sword needle. She searches for it when a kid comes up and undermines her. She advises him to move away and spins with her blade in her grasp. She wounds him through the stomach and runs. Varys visits Ned unmistakable down in his prison cell. He lets him know Arya got away, however Sansa stays connected with to Joffrey. Varys tells Ned the remainder of his family is all dead. Varys inquires as to why he came clean with Cersei he knew. Ned claims it was benevolence. Varys says Ned destroyed Robert and lets him know he's a dead man. Ned believes he's protected in light of the fact that Catelyn has Tyrion, however Varys lets him know Tyrion is free. Ned needs Varys to simply kill him now, yet he declines. On leaving, Varys professes to serve the domain, in light of the fact that no other person does. Jon Snow and his men bring two dead men back from past the wall. Sam sees they're frozen strong and don't smell. The ruler leader Mormont is told of a raven from Lord's arrival. Jon goes along with him in his cham. R.S. and Mormont requests brew for them both. He tells Snow of Robert's demise and that Obvious has been accused of treachery for plotting with Robert's siblings to deny the privileged position to Joffrey. Sansa pays attention to Cersei, expert Pycelle, Varys and Peter. Cersei says she can't wed Joffrey now since she's a swindler. Peter contends she ought to get an opportunity to demonstrate her dedication. Cersei advises her to keep in touch with her mom and Rob, advising him to come to Lord's arrival and swear dedication to Joffrey. She asks what will befall her dad. Cersei tells her that relies upon her sibling, and on her. Rob peruses the letter, yet Maester Lewin can see Cersei advised Sansa what to say. Rob realizes he can't disregard the authority order, so he'll go however not the only one. He advises Lewin to gather the flag men to protect his dad. Many ravens fly from Winterfell. At the Vale, Catelyn is enraged that her sister Lysa stood by practically the entire day to show her the word from the raven. She maintains that Lysa should send men to battle for Ned. However Lysa stresses over the well-being of her child, Robin. She says the Knights of the Vale will rem. Anne in the Vale to safeguard their master. Tyrion and Bronn head back home. Bronn concedes he's in it for the cash. Tyrion says that is not an issue, he'll continuously pay more than the other person. Around midnight, Bronn awakens hearing clamors. They are immediately encircled by Stonecrows and their chief, Shagger, child of Dolph. Tyrion gloats about his family's cash while slamming their awful weapons. Tyrion removes his ring and hands it over. He tells him in the event that they assist him, he'll with helping the Stonecrows assume control over the veil. Vale. Jon Snow works in the wall kitchen. When his victimizer comes in and insults him about being the jerk child of a double crosser. Jon lurches at him with a blade, yet men stop him. The ruler commandant comes in later and limits Jon to his quarters. Later around evening time, Jon's dire wolf apparition won't quit yapping. Jon lets him out and follows him to the leader's room. Rather than Mormont, a Goliath-distorted uncovered man comes at him. 
He cuts him. Yet the man continues to come. The man falls and the commandant emerges from his room and sees. The man gets up and begins to go after once more so John tosses his lit lamp at him and hustles Mormont out. Daenerys strolls through a torch town with Jorah as the Dothraki assault the occupants. He makes sense of that the Dothraki are looting to fund rays for boats to sail to Westeros, as she needs. All over the place, ladies and kids are shouting as the Dothraki assault them, guaranteeing the riches of their triumph. Daenerys orders them to quit going after one lady. She guarantees others, despite the fact that Jorah tells her they have a place with the fighters. Daenerys gets back to camp to find her better half sitting close to a heap of cut-off heads. Mago, a champion, is griping to Carl that Daenerys took the ladies he was wanting to mount. Daenerys presents a respectful defense for keeping the ladies from being assaulted, saying it is her will and as K. Halasi he needs to pay attention to her. Carl Drago appreciates seeing his savage lady of the hour, however Mago says a Carl who takes orders from an unfamiliar prostitute isn't exactly a Carl. He draws his blade. Drogo strolls into it deliberately and squeezes his chest against it as he lets Mago know how he'll treat his cadaver. Without drawing his own weapon, Drogo ducks and darts to keep away from Mago, then, at that point, at long last kills him with his own blade and tears out his tongue with his uncovered hands. One of Daenerys' new slaves offers to assist with cleaning Drogo's cut. The Dothraki are dubious. However Daenerys requests that her significant other let the lady treat him. He yields. At Winterfell, Rob manages the inner self of the Greek John, who requests he get to lead the vanguard into Lord's arrival. It is excessively green to say Rob. He takes steps to take his men and return home if not. Rob gazes him down and says he's free to leave, yet after he deals wit. H. The Lannisters he'll come for him for breaking his vow to his dad. Greejon draws his blade and Rob's direwolf races at him and rips off a couple of fingers. Rob blames it so as to show he knows. To the point of allowing a wolf to manage things for him. Cowed, the Greejon ignores the missing digits and the circumstance is diffused. Rob bids farewell to Wheat around midnight and advises him to remain at Winterfell. After he leaves, their more youthful sibling Rickon comes in, stressed over their folks. The following day, Grain appeals to the old divine beings. Osha, the court wildling lady, lets him know the divine beings heard him, yet she predicts terrible things for Rob traveled south and tells Weak the genuine danger misleads the north. Sam, Jon Snow and the soldiers stand up. Round the consuming assortments of the men they track down past the wall. Sam thinks they were moved by white walkers. He read about them. He says they rest underneath the ice for millennia. He trusts. T.S. the wall is sufficiently high to keep him out. Catelyn happens upon a place to stay. Rob reports that the waterway masters are falling back with Jamie Lannister behind them, and ruler Tywin is B. Ringing a bigger armed force from the south. Catelyn strolls in. She requests to converse with Rob alone, then embraces him. He shows her Sansa's letter. They notice there's no notice of Arya. Rob tells her he has 18,000 men. Catelyn says their main expectation is that he can overcome the Lannister armed force in the field. She reminds him what befell the Targaryen youngsters when they lost pre village position, they were butchered in their rest, on the sets of Tywin Lannister. She tells him in the event that he loses, the Starks all pass on. Well that simplifies it, then, at that point, he says. Tyrion and Bronn walk with the Stone Crows. They arrive at Tywin Lannister's camp. Tyrion leads them in and makes presentations. Tyrion learns the Robert is dead and Cersei is basically responsible for Lord's arrival. They realize Rob brought in his flags and is driving a military. Tyrion requests the protective layer, blades and pikes to pay his obligations. He's interfered with by an update from the field. Tywin declares he's moving against Rob distinct. He asks Shagger and his men to battle with him and commitments them more plunder. Shagger says provided the Tyrion rides with them. Rob attempts to sort out his best course of action. They need to cross the stream at the Twins, which ruler Frey controls. He's Bannerman to Catelyn's dad, yet isn't precisely dependable. 
Rob's men get a Lannister spy they captured. They say he was counting the men. Rob asks how high he got. At the point when the man says 20,000, Rob discusses leniency and orders his men to let him go. Ro, BB advises the government operative to tell Master Tywin that winter is coming with 20,000 men. When the government agent leaves, the men wonder about his turn. Ned is energized from his cell. S.A. N.S.A. comes to court to hear Cersei force retirement on Sir Barristan from the ruler's gatekeeper, which should be until death. You let my dad pass on, you're excessively old to safeguard anybody, Joffrey kills. Cersei declares Jaime will take over as master administrator of the ruler's gatekeeper. Varys guarantees Barristan a decent house, yet Barristan is rankled. He draws his blade and throws it on the floor, advising Joffrey to soften it and add it to the others in the privileged position. There's a declaration requiring some other business. Sansa ventures forward. She asks leniency for her dad. She advises them that he never needed to be hand and cherished the ruler. She says Pycelle gave him milk of the poppy and he wasn't acting naturally when he said Joffrey wasn't above all else. She asks Joffrey actually. Joffrey says Ned needs to admit and say that he is the lord or there will be no leniency. He will, she says. 